Welcome. In this topic, we would understand sets and the concept of set. So, whenever we are talking about set, there are certain notations. The set can be either explained as an enumeration or a description. So, let's say I say S has two, three, four. So, this is an enumeration. I am trying to explain what all is part of this set. The next thing is. By description, so when I say I has X, where X is a positive integer, so I can say is a positive integer, or I can another put put up another statement, okay, where I say X, okay, I is a set of all numbers X, where X is less than five and greater than four, so any number ranging from four to five would be part of my integers here so set we can say is always a finite group of numbers you have finite number of elements which are part of the set and set is not a ordered pair if i write s is equal to 2 3 4 or i write s equal to 3 4 2 it's one and the same thing the order is not important but this order becomes very important when we are talking about relations and functions. So make sure you don't get confused here. Sets, order is not important. Ordered pair is very important when we are talking about functions, which we would understand in the later topics. Again, here I say 2 is an element of S, 3 is an element of S and so on. So each of those numbers that we are talking about here is an element of S. All of those numbers together are an element of S and always null or an empty set is also an element or a subset of this S. Now this S or the relations among the set could be explained under various ways. So first I say S1 is 2, 3, 4 s2 is 3 4 2 so in this case s1 is equal to s2 so both sets are equal that's one thing the next thing is i take s3 is equal to 7 5 and 8 now s1 and s3 are disjoint there is none of the numbers that is common between two when i take s4 is equal to 3 then I say S4 is a subset of S1 and S4 is a subset of also S2 or I say S1 is a superset of S4 and S2 is a superset of S4 because this S4 which has 3 is included in S1 and S2. So those are the supersets s1 and s2 are the supersets or s4 is the subset so i have equal disjoint superset and subset the next is null set or empty set when there is nothing we denote it by phi or an empty bracket and that's what is a null set so every set it would have a null set however if i put 0 1 2 here 0 signifies a number so null set and an empty set is very different from marking within the brackets 0. So when I'm marking 0, I'm talking about 0 as an element. It's not empty, it's not null, it's not void. Universal set includes everything that's part of the universe. So let's say I have the set 1, 2. When I de depict it by a, a diagram and this is the universe. So anything which is part of 1 to 10 in the universe would be the universal set. There can be also sets where you have some elements which are common, some elements which are unique. So let's say I have S1 is equal to 2, 3, 8. S2 is equal to 2, 3, 9. Now here some elements are common that's 2, 3. But 8 and 9 are unique. So those are peculiar to S1 and S2. So I cannot say these two sets are equal. I cannot say these two sets are disjoint because there is something that's common. I cannot say S2 is a subset of S1 or S1 is a subset of S2 because there are different peculiar elements that are present. 
now when you have these kind of set you have certain operations that come into play so this is a set that has 1 and 2 this is another set that is 2 and 3 so i can write 1 here 3 here and 2 here so what is this is a and this is b so a union is a union b where a is 1 2 b is 2 3 so a union b would be 1 2 and 3 that's everything which is within a and b a intersection b would be what would be the thing that's common that's 2 now this whole lies within a universe and that universe is 1 2 3 4 5 so 4 and 5 are outside and this is the universe so what is the universe would be 1 2 3 4 and 5 now what is a complement a complement is anything that is outside a so outside a when i take just a and b okay so 1 2 is within the a so what is outside a is just this region and that is 3 so the complement of a would be 3 here okay so complement is 3 when I just take A and B. So I repeat again you have A and B. This is A and this is B. I remove A so what is left is this region of B and this is 3 so I have the complement which is 3. The next important thing is the laws or the sets of operations. So similar to the maths you have the same laws that hold true in your, uh, in your sets. So under maths you have the commutative law where I say A plus B is equal to B plus A or a multiplied by b is equal to b multiplied by a similarly i say a union b is equal to b union a or a intersection b is equal to b intersection a that's my commutative law the next is my associative law associative law says a union b union c would be equal to a union b union c so either I write it this way or this way, it's one and the same thing. When I say distributive law, A union B intersection C would be equal to A union B intersection A union C. Okay. So A and B, the union of A and B, this is A, B and C. So A union B is this whole thing. A union C is this whole thing and Intersection of this is this region where I talk about the common area that's lying between A union B and A union C. So that would be the intersection point. So that's how we explain the distributive law. So three laws under mathematics, the commutative law, associative law and distributive law. And these three hold true in your theory of sets as well. So with this we cover the very fundamental of sets. We would be proceeding with relations and functions in the upcoming lectures. So stay tuned. Have a wonderful day ahead.